Good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 6, Sumihora Boshi. Last episode, Rena learned some bad shit about Rena. Rena's actually a scam artist? I, I guess she would she would technically be... Well, yeah, that. I guess what she's doing is textbook scamming. So, yeah, she's a scam artist, and... Well, she already knew she was a hostess. And she's involved with Tepe, the the m most, you know, justified character in the entire freaking game so far. Uh, and, uh, so far, obviously. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, weather's a bit better now. It's like 50 today, but I still have my window open because, uh, honestly... I'm weird. I prefer 50 degrees over fucking 80 from my family's coal stove heating up the whole damn house. So, yeah. <laughs> so you might hear cars go by every now and then. I feel like I've had a anecdote like this. That's a car. <laughs> I feel like I've had an anecdote like this at the beginning of one of these episodes before. And I said something along the lines of, well, fits with the atmosphere of Hinamizawa, doesn't it? I don't know if it will, depending on what happens this episode. I, I don't think, quote-unquote, bad shit will happen yet. Uh, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it is very possible that it could. But, there's only one way to find out, so let's just read. <clears throat> when I got home, the door was locked. I used my key to get in, and I found a note in the living room. Something's come up, so I have to go. I'm going to eat out tonight, is what the note said. This wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. Each time, he only told me he had to go to Okinomiya for something. But I knew the real reason, because I heard him talking on the phone once. Rina-san must have, must have had some free time between jobs and asked him out to have dinner together. I heaved a sigh, looking at the new living room I hated, and went to my room. I thought back over what I just heard at the coffee house. I tried to rationalize the meaning of her actions there. Maybe she had to pretend to be a bad person because she was being threatened by the man. But even after she called the man... Wait, but even after the man she called Techon left the table, she continued to threaten the guys and push them into signing the loan contract immediately. <clears throat> if she was threatened to play along with the man, she wouldn't have done that. If she was pretending to be a bad person, she could have shown a little bit of mercy or sympathy when he left her alone with them. It's like holding water in a bowl you made with your hands. No matter how sturdy you made the bowl, water would leak from your fingers. Mercy and sympathy leak out from you. But nothing, not even a drop of water, leaked from Rina-san. Her hands weren't even moist, they were all dried up. There was no water that could leak through those hands. Rina-san was threatening those guys as much as the man was. Neither was leading the other along. They were doing it together. That was it. Rina-san is... a bad person. My brain cells accepted the idea with applause. After all, I always hated Rina-san. I just couldn't accept the feeling because my father liked her. But, at that moment, I could finally accept it. She's a bad person, just like my mother. She's an existence that will ruin everything and destroy my father's happiness just by being with him. But I wonder if my father would understand that Rina-san is a bad person if I told him so. My father likes, him, likes her so much that he would jump over a cliff if she asked him to. He thinks everything she does or says is great, and he interprets everything about her in a positive way. He protects her and praises her without her asking him to. I'm not a kid anymore. I understand how a woman can tame a man. It's different from love. Love is about trying to build a relationship. Taming is just a way of satisfying the lust to dominate. She's just trying to make him into her slave. Women can deceive men, even my father. They can use dirty methods to ensnare men like they're following a manual. It's the weak point all men are born with. Even with a strong will, they can't resist it. That's why we hate those women who exploit the weak point to deceive who exploit that weak point to deceive men. That's why I couldn't bring myself to like Rena-san. For the sake of argument, let's assume I acknowledged an unre 
Unreciprocated. Why can't I pronounce that word? Word. Unreciprocated love like that. But that would only be as long as it was. Wait. But that would only be as long as it was love. If it wasn't love, it was just a method to threaten and squeeze money out of him. I would never forgive her. I remembered her conversation at the coffee house. Rina-san said that my father is a big spender. In fact, I think he makes- I think he spends more money without hesitation than before- Wait. <laughs> I don't know why I can't read at all today. In fact, I think he spends more money without hesitation than before he met Rina-san. I was happy that he started to regain an interest in going out into the world again. But now I don't know whether I should be happy or not. He controls the money of the Ryugu family overall. But since I do the grocery shopping, he often gives me his bank buck so that I can withdraw money. Because of that, I know where he keeps his bank buck, his personal seal, and other important stuff. They're in one of his drawers, which he usually locks. I know where he hides the key, and I know the combination of the cash box inside the drawer. He might be coming back soon, so I felt a little nervous, but I had to make sure. I opened the cash box, which had some bank books, personal seals, stamps, and unused postcards. I removed everything from the from the cash box to get at the bank books. Then I found something new. On the bottom of the box, there was a bundle of new 10,000 yen bills. Its thickness wasn't something I could ignore. There was also a paper wrapper, a, a paper wrapper that looked like it had been bundling the bills. The wrapper had a stamp that said it was a bundle of a million yen. Oh, Jesus. He usually kept some cash at home because it was troublesome to go to the bank every time he needed money. But it was usually around 100,000 to 200,000 yen at most. He's never kept such a big amount of money at home before because he knows it's unsafe. The extraordinary amount of 10,000 yen bills was abnormally intimidating. I tried to open the bank book, but my fingers got numb all of a sudden. A part of me was trying to deny the things I heard at the coffee house. It wasn't because I wanted to defend my father, or even Rina-san. It was because I didn't want to believe my husband, my father, was the husband in Hinamizawa the blackmailers were talking about. I opened the bank book. The last time I saw it was about two or three months ago. It shows countless withdrawals since that day. I probably wouldn't normally understand what those numbers meant. But I felt in that moment as if the ten different digits were speaking to me. They were a series of cruel digits. It starts with some understandable expenses that I assume represent dinners or something. But then, the amount of money starts to become nice round numbers, like a five or a ten. I can tell by looking at the dates he withdrew money that he wanted to have a cert- Wait, oh yeah. I can tell by looking at the dates he withdrew money that he wanted to have a certain amount of cash on hand when he went out with Rina-san. Among those expenses, a big number appeared all of a sudden. It was too much money to spend on a date. Hundreds of thousands of yen. I looked at the date of the withdrawal, and I traced it back in my memory. I remembered. Around that time, Rina-san was talking about moving into a new apartment. I know the market rate of rental apartments in Okinomiya. You need to put down two safety deposits and two payments of key money in order to rent an apartment. That amount of withdrawal sounded reasonable now. He paid the whole down payment for her new apartment. After that, big numbers appeared one after another. I could tell they were for congratulatory gifts for her new apartment or something. The numbers got bigger and bigger. It looked like at first he was withdrawing only the amount of money needed. But then, he started withdrawing big amounts all at once because he knew he was going to use it someday anyway. The change meant only one thing. He lost his sense of the value of money. The balance kept going down, and I started feeling anxious about what's going to happen if he continued spending money like that. But then, I saw a deposit of a big amount of money into the account. Where did that money come from? There was only one thing I could think of. I opened the other bank book. It was easy, like a puzzle for kids. It was like playing with an easy jigsaw puzzle that comes with huge pieces that you don't even have to put together to see what the whole picture looks like. My father was using money from his time deposits. In other words, the settlement my mother paid my father when she divorced him. 
To him, it's cursed money. I'd understand if he wanted to use it to get a new love, but that was just an excuse to use the money from his time deposits. Money is money. Even though it's his divorce alimony, it's still important money for our future. Even though it's cursed money to him, that doesn't mean he can waste it. Big expenses start appearing one after another. There are many expenses, upwards of six digits. For some reason, I could immediately tell they were for buying electric appliances and furniture. He must have been buying everything she asked him to. If, from the beginning, Rina-san was only seeing to check if he could- Yeah, yeah, I, I even read that right and I still thought I didn't. Uh, to check if he could- Okay. To check if he could end up being a big catch, she must have been trying to find how much money she could squeeze out of him. And my father bought her anything she wanted, no matter how expensive it was. So she probably thinks of him as the perfect catch now. The numbers in the bank book told me so. The simple numbers and dates on the bank book had started talking to me. Around the time he started withdrawing big amounts of money, Rina-san started coming to the house more often, and she also started spending the night. To Rina-san, my father was at first just a guy who spends big money, but around that time, she landed her big catch. My father used to refer to her as my friend in Okinomiya at first, but he started referring to her as Rina-san around that time. This is partially his fault, but he was betrayed by his beloved wife, and he was feeling hurt and down for a long time. It's also partially my fault. That's why I didn't want to blame him. And he's not that good looking either. There's no way he's immune to women. He must have not been able to resist an attractive lady who aggressively approached him when he was feeling down. He's crazy about Rina-san, and he can see nothing other than her. I can't blame him, because Rina-san trained him to be that way. I put the bank books and the other things back into the cash box. This cash box is just like my father's heart. Rina-san is eating up the contents. What should I do? Think, Rana Ryugu. Should I tell him about Rina-san's scheme? No, that probably won't do anything. The whole point of taming an animal is that it won't run away from its owner even when the door is wide open. My father probably won't leave his cage even if I open the door. Should I confront Rina-san about her plot when he's with her? The results would be the same. Rina-san would run behind his back. He'd probably try to protect her. If she pressed her breast against his back, he'd protect her no matter what. Okay. I couldn't make this a problem between me and him. First of all, I was trying to get rid of Rina-san for his sake. If we got mad at each other, it would give the advantage to Rina-san. It would be like I was putting her myself into her trap. Then, that meant I couldn't make him do anything. If I couldn't make him break up with Rina-san, I'd have to talk to Rina-san directly. So, instead of making my father fight, I'd have to fight in his place. But how? That guy, Kasai-san, who was with Shichan today, seemed to know the man Rina-san was with. I wonder if I can somehow meet him again. He looked scary, but I was introduced to him as a friend of Michan. Michan has a lot of power around here. There's no way he would treat me badly. I wondered if he could tell Rina-san and the man to back off from my father. That helped me a lot. But I didn't know how I could meet him again. I could ask Michan for help, but I don't want her to know about my situation. This is a problem of the Ryugu family. This is nobody's business but mine. Yeah, this is a battle that I'd have to fight alone. I regretted my parents' divorce. I wept about the tragedy I could have prevented if I had tried. I wasn't going to weep this time. I wasn't going to let the chance slip away. This time, I would fight for my happiness. Damn. <laughs> okay, so we were semi-close to the end of this part. What of? Alright. New tips unlocked. Property estimate. Okay, this sounds like it's probably just gonna be exposition. Chiba unlocked the husband in Hinamizawa. And the image is a bunch is just fat stacks of cash. <laughs>
Property estimate. Dear Ritsuko Mamiya-sama, Executive Housing Corporation. Attached estimate. We thank you for your past visits and inquiries to our office. We've included the estimate for the property you inquired about. Basic information. Property name, Palace of Versailles, room 707? <laughs> okay? Is that, is that just the name of a fucking, there's, that, that would just be the name of an apartment building, right? <laughs> Not the actual Palace of Versailles? That, that's a, that's a little hard to believe. <laughs> Property code, 14M1421. Property type, modern condominium. Layout, 2LDK. Address, yeah, okay, it is. Shishibone City, Koiwa Cho to Chome. Okay. Transportation, XXX Line, Gogura Station, 5 minutes on foot. Cost, 49,800,000 yen. Maintenance fee, 20,000 yen. Other, Southeast Corner Room, Elevator Floor. Condominium Fitness Club membership included. Thank you for your interest in this property. The area around Gogura Station is a prime real estate zone for luxury condominiums. Along with future planned developments, the real estate values in and around the Gogura Station are expected to rise, and this property is not an exception. As a result, many prospective buyers are interested in this property. Hence, we'd like for you to understand that the selection process for this property will be done via lottery. Mm. Also, we all... We also offer celebrity member pr preferential treatment, granting highly improved chances through additional lottery entries. Please feel free to inquire with our agents for more details. Executive Housing Corporation. Celebrity Account Manager, manager Kawabata. Isn't that the name of the boat captain from Mumineko? <laughs> Probably not the same guy, right? <laughs> That'd be a bit, that'd be a bit ridiculous. And I could even just be misremembering his name. He was a minor character after all. Oh, you're talking about Kasai-san. He's Shion's watchdog. Her watchdog? Really? <laughs> yeah, he is. Shion tends to do crazy things. So she needs to have someone watch her all the time. I think you're as crazy as she own. Keiichi Kun cut into the conversation. They ended up making a lot of noise, teasing each other like they always do. Mion made it sound like that man, Kasai san, is some sort of territory boss in Okinomiya. It wouldn't be easy for me to meet him in person. But because he's Shichan's watchdog, I might be able to find a way. The problem, though, is that I don't have any connection to Shichan either. We hang around every once in a while whenever she comes to Hinamizawa, but I've never called or visited her. I have no idea how we can meet. Even if I could meet Kasai-san, there's no guarantee that he'd help me. He seems like the kind of person who doesn't like to gossip about others. He told me about Rina-san at the coffee house only because Shichan pushed him to. Plus, the situation could grow worse very quickly while I waited for the chance to meet him. So any help he might offer could come too late. I remember Kasai-san told me that, as her next step, Rina-san usually uses her partner to threaten their catch. That would signify the end of her performance. They were going to take all of my father's money. I wasn't feeling a sense of crisis yet, but that time might be coming very soon. Even as I was at school, taking a class peacefully... That man might already be at the house right at this moment, threatening my father to hand over his bank bucks. Once I become anxious, I get more and more anxious. I could feel a big pressure on my chest as if the ceiling had collapsed on me. Man, I'm so bored. My life is too peaceful. Keiichi-kun talks to me, yawning. Is that so bad? I'd love to have a peaceful life that'd bore me. I don't. I wish some kind of big event would happen, like aliens coming to attack us or something. I'm not saying I'd like to have something like that every week, but at least at the end of every month or so. Oh, and that doesn't include our monthly test. 
If aliens really did come, destroyed the Earth, and burned all of Hinamisawa, would you be satisfied? Would you? No, that's not what I mean. I'm just saying that I want for some kind of excitement, because I'm so bored. He had no idea of what I've been going through, of course, and that's why he says that. But I was still irritated by his insensitivity. Makes sense. <laughs> I couldn't understand why he wouldn't be satisfied with such a peaceful life. He never has to doubt that today and tomorrow will be as fun as yesterday. I was all too aware that boring and peaceful days could be destroyed all of a sudden. I knew that boring and peaceful days could come to an end all of a sudden because your mom wanted to divorce your dad. I knew that you could feel like you didn't belong anywhere in your own house because your dad had gotten a new girlfriend. Even so, you had to repeat the same kind of day over and over again. That's why I want to live every day happily in order to be prepared when the world comes to its end. I'm jealous of you, you know? You look so happy all the time. I wish I had that kind of skill. You're jealous of me, huh? How do you do it? How do you live every day not being bored, but being happy? If it really is a skill, I'd love to learn how. <laughs> That's easy. All you need to do is realize. Realize what? There's no way he could realize it. And it was probably better that he didn't, because that meant he was truly happy. You just need to realize that your happy days will one day come to an end. Hmm. Okay. The three of us walked home from school like we always did. Michan said goodbye to us at the corner of the street where she took her separate way home. She walked away, waving, but I chased after her. Michan! Hmm? What? Michan apparently thought she dropped something, and she looked around to see what she dropped. Uh, <laughs> I almost forgot to tell you. I saw Shichan and Kasai-san yesterday at a coffee house, and I picked up something that Kasai-san dropped while he was there. Of course, he hadn't dropped anything. I was lying. If I could meet him, I'd just show him whatever, tell him I thought it was his, and apologize for my mistake. Oh, well, thank you then. I'll send it over to him in that case. Uh, uh, I'd like to give it back to him in person. Eh? <laughs> Michan looked surprised. I couldn't blame her. I'd met him only once. It's weird to want to give something back in person to someone that you barely know. Well, that's alright, but why? Uh, hey. He had this cute beard and these cute sunglasses. I'm so crazy about cute things. Hey. Could I fudge my true intentions with my cute mode? I tried it anyway. Michan usually takes, word a, takes words at their face value, and indeed she seemed to buy it. <laughs> Please don't pull out his beard and take it home with you. So, do you think I can meet him? Well, I have no idea if he's busy or not. I'll ask him when he's coming to Hinamizawa next. I needed to know when as soon as possible. Of course, I wasn't going to say I wanted to meet him today, but at least tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What are you guys doing? Hmm? Fufufu. <laughs> it seems like Rena found a new love. No! <laughs> really? How interesting. I want to hear about it, too. I didn't want her to leave it up in the air, so I told her I think I should give it back to him as soon as possible. I'm sure he's looking for it, too. Michan said okay twice and walked away, waving. I hadn't yet thought about how I was going to ask for help when I would meet him. He seems to be in a higher position than Rina-san and her partner. If he agreed to help me, it would be very encouraging. But there was a possibility that he'd tell me he didn't want to interfere in other people's private matters. He could just say the whole thing was another love triangle between a father, his daughter, and his lover. Bye, Rana. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I said goodbye to Keiichi Kun and walked home alone. After Keiichi Kun was gone, everything went quiet, and my head became clear. What I needed at that moment was quiet time to think about what I should do from then on. I shouldn't depend on Kasai-san to solve my problem. He'd most likely decline my request, 
So I'll have to think about some alternatives. It's probably better that I just do that. A love triangle between a father, his daughter, and his lover. Those words bothered me, because I've seen an unhappy triangle like that before. That sort of thing had happened to Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun experienced it last year. He fought for his sister in a triangle with his aunt. It was the same situation as mine. I'm trying to fight to protect my father. Satoshi-kun fought alone. Nobody helped him. All I did for him was give him my sympathy and compassion. I didn't think I could do anything more than that. I felt sorry for him, but I didn't really help him out. Irresponsibly, I tried to cheer him up, and I probably told him something that I thought would make him feel better, but that hurt him instead. I recently realized how much I hurt him with my insensitivity, because Keiichi just hurt me the same way. I'm going down the same path Satoshi-kun went last year. I feel like I'm experiencing deja vu. An unusual repetition. <laughs> Would that mean that I'd be the one who gets demoned away this year? I should be okay. I wasn't thinking about running away from Hinamizawa. Was I? I wasn't thinking about running away from Hinamizawa, but I thought about running away from my home many times. That's why I made the place I could escape to in the garbage dump. That dump happened to be in Hinamizawa, but what if it wasn't? Running there would be the same thing as running away from Hinamizawa. <laughs> I shouldn't think like that. Oyashiro-sama will get mad at me. Oyashiro-sama is really scary. Oh boy. I saw flickering lights in my head. Oh no. Every time I tried to remember that time, my mind would stop working properly. I remembered the vivid colors of my psychoactive drugs. The flickering lights and clouds started spreading in my head. They were so bright and annoying. Don't try too hard to remember. Don't try too hard to remember. Uh, no, no, no. I couldn't stop the flickering lights in my head. I couldn't have that feeling. I had to fill my heart with another feeling. Yeah, there was no time for these crazy flickering lights in my head. I had to think about what I should do when Kasai-san declined my request for help. I had to protect my father from Rina-san and that bad man. Wait, why was I still calling her that? Rina is Rina. 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 She's a bad person who deceived my father and tried to bring us unhappiness. Bad people bring bad things into the world without even doing anything. They're different from the other 90% of people who aren't bad. If you let them loose, They'll even ruin the people around them. When you have one bad tangerine in a box, it spreads its fungus to the other tangerines around it. That's what bad people are like. I couldn't remember how Satoshi-kun resolved his triangle last year. <sighs> but I could still see the flickering lights in my head. They're still flickering. 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 Well, this is not a good thing. <laughs> Just as the swirl of flickering lights were making me dizzy, I saw my house. I also saw Rena's on scooter parked by the side of the gate. The moment I saw the bike, the flickering lights disappeared and I regained control of myself. Rena's on spent the night last night. She told me she had to work today in the evening, so she should be leaving soon. But I didn't want to be around her even for the little while until she left. I said I'm home real loud, rushed into the house, pretended that my friends were waiting outside, and rushed out of the house. But Rina-san stopped me. Okay, well, I was hoping she'd show up at some point this episode, and we're already halfway through. I was told in the comments last episode that apparently uh, her other sprites have like a Joestar tattoo? But this one doesn't? Oh yeah, there's like a star there. Oh, I did not mean to scroll. Yeah, she has like a star on her stomach. Cool, cool. I've actually only seen... I'm assuming that jo Joestar is in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right? Unless jo Joestar also means something else and I'm just stupid. But... <laughs> yeah, I've only seen like six episodes of JoJo's. It's pretty good, but I, I need... It's been like... Oh my god, like, 
two years since I started it or something. And I haven't continued it yet, so yeah, I, I kind of got to get on that eventually. So, yeah. And I know Part 6 was uh, just announced, I think, last night. So, crazy. There's going to be even more of it. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Rena-chan, you're home. Uh, hello. This was the first time I thought Rena-san's smile was ugly. It only stood to reason. I had realized the scheme she was hiding behind the smile. Your father and I went to Gogora for lunch today. There's a restaurant there that makes delicious Indian curry. My father poked his head out of the living room, and he says, I want to go there again next time we go. I really like that curry. I wondered if he meant with me next time, or with me and her. Anyway, I hate it when Rina-san says, your father. We bought you some curry home from the restaurant. Try it later. It's very good. Have you heard of that restaurant, Rina-chan? I didn't know the restaurant she was talking about. I saw it in a magazine. It's a new restaurant that just opened recently. I also remembered that it was an expensive restaurant. The amount of money they spent on the take-home curry alone must have been enough to cover the cost of all our dinners for several nights. Since I was aware of what was in the bank books, it was hard for me to stay calm. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Rina-san. Rina-chan, your father and I would like to talk about something with you. I'm sorry, but my friends are waiting for me, so I have to go. Hello? We're going to go treasure hunting at the garbage dump again. <laughs> you really like treasure hunting, huh? I'd like to go there sometime. Well, I've got to go. Bye. Every time Rina-san moved her arms or head, the scent of her perfume struck my nostrils. I hate the smell of her perfume, so I couldn't stay there for a second longer. I rushed out of the house and started running to get away from her perfume. The rubber band inside me, the one called Rena, was stretched all the way to its limit. I'm pretty sure I'd explode and go crazy if the rubber band broke. I didn't want to feel like that inside my own house. My house was supposed to be the place where I could open my heart freely. I ran away. I ran away from there. I ran farther and farther away from there because it was, a pl it was no longer a place I belonged. It's not that I had a destination in mind. I was just running away. I was running to escape to a place where I did belong. Didn't I decide to fight against that woman? Didn't I decide to fight against her either by myself or with my father? But then, once I saw her fake smile, a chill ran up my back. It was like I picked up a stone, found a carpet of bugs underneath it, and put it back on the ground in a hurry. I rushed out of the house as fast as I could. Did I want to fight, or did I want to run away? Was I just choosing to spend a peaceful time at my hideout, believing that tomorrow would be the same as today? I couldn't do that. I didn't know when they'd spring their trap. I couldn't afford to waste any time. I knew that deep down. I knew that, but I just wanted to run away. I couldn't stop myself from running away. And so, I did run away. At times like this, the mattress in my hideout would feel so soft. That I knew. Evening. Okay. The cries of the Higurashi were soothing to the ears. They sounded as soft as my, ra eh, as my mattress. They were like music. They didn't force any feelings upon me. They cried as if to tell me to just be who I am. It was always so quiet here that I immediately noticed the purr of an engine coming closer. People used to come here and make a lot of noise during the dam conflict, but now, nobody really comes here. This is a place forgotten. So it was rare to see somebody come through here at all. I sat on the roof of an abandoned car and waited for the intruder to go away without looking their way. It's gonna be somebody. But the purr of the engine stopped. I'm not stupid. If it stopped, I knew exactly who it had to be. I heard the person calling me, but I ignored it once. Oh, is it Rena? Oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> then I think I do know what's gonna happen right now, but maybe not? The person came closer, making it harder for me to ignore her. And she called my name again. I turned around this time. Yep. Rena-san. Rena-chan, are you hard of hearing? I'm sorry. I guess I couldn't hear you because of the wind. <laughs> she seemed to buy my poor excuse. 
She smiled and said, yeah, it happens sometimes. Are you here alone? Where's your friend? I'm playing here alone. Well, it's rare for a girl your age to play alone. Rinasan stretched and looked across the huge garbage dump. I can't... Oh, wrong character. <laughs> I can't believe people throw so much scrap out here. Did you know? There used to be a place near Harasaka where people threw tons of abandoned cars without wheels. I wasn't interested in Rinasan's old story, but I pretended to listen and nodded. Oh no, I totally know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm fully remembering how this continues, I believe. <laughs> She doesn't take this road to go back to Okinomiya. I guess she knew I'd be here and came by to see me. What did she want? It was obvious that she was just trying to make conversation. She probably took it personally when I avoided her earlier, which must be why she was here to butter me up. It would be better for her not to have any conflicts with the daughter of the man she's seeing, no matter what the intention of seeing him is. In that sense, it was a reasonable action for her to take. While I listened to her old story, all I could think about was when she was going to leave. Didn't I have to fight against her? Didn't I decide to fight against her? Didn't I find out her plot at the coffee house in Okinomiya? Didn't I find out that this woman is squeezing money out of my father when I looked inside his cash box? I know who you are. Please leave my father alone. How easy it would be if those two sentences could solve the problem. She'd probably deny it. Even if I told her about what I heard at the coffee house, I have no evidence of her plot. If she said she did it because the vulgar man was threatening her, there would be nothing I could do. But I know this woman is a bad person. I know something horrible will happen in the near future if I waste time like this. A strange, tense feeling started coming over me, but I didn't know how to let it out. As the feeling started running high, I became unable to stand the smell of her perfume. I wanted to put a certain distance between me and her, so I climbed down the slope of the scrap heap. I kept going down and down the slopes of the garbage dump. When I turned around, I saw her coming down as well, muttering. Was she following me? In order to run away from her, I started running down the slope all the way to the bottom, went around behind some trash piles, and arrived at the front of my hideout. My escape was meaningless. Not only was she going to catch up with me eventually, all I did was let her know the way to my hideout that nobody is supposed to know about. I wanted to make sure she never saw my precious hideout. I was about to leave, but then she appeared. Wow! This is cool, it's like a secret base! <laughs> this is my secret hideout! Nobody comes here, and nobody can hear us! No. Oh. <laughs> I felt strange hearing myself say that. So, this is your secret hideout, huh? <laughs> I'm honored to be invited here. She must have thought I told her my secret because she was worth sharing sharing it with. She looked happy. She found the station wagon, looked inside of it through the window, and went all ooh and ah excitedly. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yep. Okay. Crazy time already. Shit, this chapter is escalating even faster than Mayakashi did. This is a secret place that nobody else knows. I felt like my consciousness was separating from my body. Like I was floating. I don't know how I'm supposed to read that line, but whatever. But it didn't feel good. Like when I drink Amazake. I don't know what that is. It was more like being car sick. I felt like I was going to throw up. My brain was probably secreting some chemical in order to avoid facing the reality that I'd have to stay with this woman. That I couldn't run away from her. But, even if my brain tried to avoid recognizing it, the reality in front of me wouldn't change. Rhinotan? Yes? What's wrong? Are you feeling okay? Yes, I'm fine. I inhaled fresh air and pulled my consciousness back to reality. I didn't feel like throwing up anymore, but I still felt off balance. I leaned onto a scrap of garbage to keep my balance. I like you, Rhinotan. Do you like me? <laughs> uh, what are you talking about all of a sudden? Oh no, I think I know what she's gonna say. I said that because I didn't want to say that I like her. I've been seeing her father for quite a long time now. And we've been talking about many things, you know? I needed to stop feeling like this. 
Get up, Renna. I'd heard something like this before. A part of me was trying to understand what this woman was trying to say, but another part of me was trying not to. I felt as if her words were bouncing around in my head, and I started having a headache. We had a serious talk about our future the other day. You know, about our life together and so on. What? Oh boy. You like Uncle Akihito, don't you, Rena? I mean, Rena? So, your father and I are... What's going on? Mother? What are you thinking about, Rena Ryugu? This is an important moment! You're about to have a one-on-one -on -one battle with Rena-san! No, Mom. What about my dad? What about me? I don't want you to divorce him. I don't want you to get remarried to anyone else. No, please don't divorce him. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you get remarried. I'm not going to let you get married to my father. What? I don't care if you go out with him, but I'm not going to let you get married to my father. She must have not thought that I'd say it straight out like that. She looked stunned. After a while, she broke the silence with her laughter. <laughs> I thought you might reject me, but I didn't think you'd say it straight out like that. You thought I might reject you? I'm surprised you even noticed that I was doing it. Oh, God. <laughs> of course I did. You always ran away whenever you saw me. You thought I didn't know? That's why I hate kids. She frowned, revealing her ugly self. It should have been the first time I saw her face like that, but I wasn't surprised at all. Her face had looked like that to me from the beginning. I wanted to get along with you if I could, at least on the surface. But I guess it's hard to do that now since you hate me so much. What do you hate about me? I'd like to know for future reference. Everything. I hate everything about you. I hate your smell too. One vicious word came out of my mouth after another. I didn't have wings, but I felt as if I was flying up to the sky. I felt weird and uncomfortable but also exhilarated. I felt as if I was letting another me use my body. I was in the middle of a disastrous battlefield, but I felt like it wasn't even my business. That's just fine with me, because I hate you too. I guess we're even. <laughs> you little fucking brat. You better shut your fucking mouth or I'll make you. Never come to my house again. I'll never let you get married to my father. <laughs> I don't need your permission, you know. Well, why don't you try and stop your father from remarrying? Let's see what happens. I think you're wasting your time, though. She didn't look intimidated by me at all, and that made me feel a little intimidated in return. Why was she so confident of her absolute control over my father? She had to have more than confidence to be able to act as fearless as this. She must have something tangible. Before I asked it what it was, she told me herself. I'm pregnant. Oh shit, <laughs> I for- I don't remember this heart. You're lying! I- I'm not lying. It's true. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. It's a big lie. She has to divorce because she got pregnant. She has to get married because she got pregnant. That's a lie! That's a big lie! I'm a Christian, so I can't get an abortion. Excuse- Where did this come from? I mean, okay. This feels like a weird line. I'll just have to accept it. Plus, we had sex with marriage in mind. He made me pregnant. If he changes his mind and takes no responsibility, it's going to be a big mess, you know? That was your plan, wasn't it? I overheard it. I heard the conversation you had with that man, Chan at the coffee house. I know you started seeing my father for his money. I know you call him your husband in Hinamizawa. I know he's just a big catch for you. I know everything because I heard it from Kasai-san. I know you do badger games too. Oh, you knew? Wow, wow, wow. Oh boy. Before I knew it, Rina was standing in, right in front of me. We glared at each other with our faces almost touching. So? Reina-chan, you know everything. 
And what are you thinking you're going to do? Don't come near my father ever again! What if I refuse? You wanted to talk to me at your secret hideout, right? I kind of knew what you wanted to talk to me about. You brought me to your secret hideout where nobody knows and nobody can hear us, right? Yeah, you're right. Nobody knows about this place, and nobody can hear us here. Nobody comes here because it's a place forgotten. Our faces were so close to each other that our noses could almost touch. I knew what I was talking about, but I didn't know what would happen next. I couldn't back down now that I'd come to this point. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I should do. <laughs> come on, let's not do this. Let's be friends again. Rena started laughing and slapped me on the back. My expression didn't change, and I kept staring at Rena. But I didn't notice her real intention of putting both of her arms around my neck. The tension broke, already stretched thin, and Rena squeezed my neck hard. Oh boy. I was op- wait, I think I- Yeah, okay, now I actually remember what's happening- what happens here, I think. What I thought was going to happen, I think happens later, in Act 2 of this- of this part, you know? In Act 2 of what happens here. <laughs> I was openly hostile, but I didn't realize Rena's evil intentions until she started choking me. <laughs> you little brat! I'm so close to getting millions of yen! If you at least pretended to get along with me, I would have given you a good allowance! But you just can't keep your fucking mouth shut, can you? You got some fucking nerve! A brat like you should die! I tried to pry her hands off my neck, but I didn't have the strength to do so. I've never had to voice a character as psychotic as Rena with this voice. <laughs> like, there was Yashiro and The World Ends With You, but she was just more chaotic, not crazy. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to kill you, but I'll probably never get as big a catch as your father again. So, I don't mind killing you for millions of yen. I was going to disappear after I got that money anyway! This is what you get for talking back to me! The world around me got darker and darker. I had never known an evil intention like this. Namely, the intention to kill me. It didn't scare me, though. That's because being scared is a feeling that people use to express how they feel when they see wildfire on the other side of a river. People- that People on the island with the wildfire with their deaths right in front of them. They don't get scared. If I'd loosened my grip on her hands even a little bit, she'd crush my throat. This was a simple competition to see who was stronger. Rena wanted to get into the most advantageous position, so she tried to push me down to the ground so that she could mount me. If I let her do that, I wouldn't stand a chance. I tried to keep my current position, but I was losing a lot of energy by being choked. It was only a matter of time before Rena could push me down. Is it just me or is the text whiter now? Like, it's not as, like, vividly pink as it was earlier on. I lost my balance on purpose. I tried to fall backwards in order to put, off her, put her off balance. I couldn't hold my breath long enough to keep up that strength competition. So I had no choice but to take that chance. We fell on the ground, tangled together. But as Rena was strongly determined to kill me, she didn't even take her hands away from my neck after she fell. Oh, no, no, I... Okay, no, I know what happens. I know... Okay. I keep on misremembering how this scene happens, but now I... I think I 100% know what happens here now. <laughs> However, my action made Rena loosen her grip on my throat. It wasn't loose enough for me to break free from her grip. But it gave me a few moments to use my hands for something other than stopping her from crushing my throat. If I hadn't taken the chance, I would have been done for. That's why I tried to literally seize my chance. I moved both of my hands on the ground. To seize that chance. I felt a piece of broken glass on my right hand. Yup, I did remember. That was truly my chance to literally save myself from the brink of death. I cut Rin Rina's wrist deep with the piece of glass. Oh, never mind. I thought she slashed her throat. Ah! 
Rina tried to endure the pain for a few seconds. The pain that severe from someone so cornered soon broke her well. She let go of my throat to cling to her bloody rest. I used that moment to roll away from her. Ah! It fucking hurts! She screamed, both in pain and also to try and intimidate me again. It didn't work anymore, though. Intimidation only works on the opponent when the opponent is hesitant to fight. When you're already in a fight, screaming like that means nothing more than letting the opponent know how badly you're hurt. I no longer had any hesitation. I had learned from Rena. She taught me what I have to do in a situation like this. That's right. This is my secret hideout. I know every single piece of junk in here. Maybe I knew that a day like this was coming. Was it just a coincidence that it was there? I had pulled out a meter long, meter long lead pipe. Not at all surprised to see it there. I raised it up high and brought it back down. There was no way Rena could block this hard and heavy lead pipe with just her arms. She'd probably, she probably tried to block it with the palms of her hands in order to take it from me. But her long nails wouldn't let that happen. Unable to catch it the way she wanted, she broke her fingers and some of her nails came off too. <laughs> Her scream made me realize that I had the advantage. An advantage I would have to keep. If I didn't, she'd turn the tables just like I did. And then she'd choke me to death for sure. Stop! Stop it! Wait! Rena shielded her head with her arms, but it didn't help. All that would change is that I'd break her arms before I broke her face. I'm serious! Stop it right now! I'm serious, too. Die. Die. Die! You should die! Yeah, that's right. I should have done this a long time ago. I didn't need proof. I didn't have to talk to anybody. That's stupid. That's nonsense! I should have done this a long time ago! If I had done it a long time ago, my father wouldn't have been deceived. I could have protected him. I could have protected my family. I could have protected my life. I could have been myself. My mother wouldn't have divorced my father. I could have stayed happy. I wouldn't have had to be unhappy. I'm going to recapture my happiness. At this moment, I'm going to win back my happiness. I'm not going to cry for misfortune. I'm not going to give in to a fate of unhappiness. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to seize my happiness right now with my own two hands. Rena tried to run away from me, but as she no longer had the use of her hands, it made it difficult for her to stand up to escape, especially since there were scraps of junk everywhere on the ground. After all, this is my hideout. This is my territory. Nobody can run away from me here. She tried to climb up the slope of garbage, slipped, fell, and rolled all the way back down. She didn't stand up or move. Her eyes were open and her neck was bent at an unnatural angle. I didn't know how to make sure she was dead, so I kept looking at her opened eyes for a while. She could be faking it for all I know. But she didn't close her eyes no matter how long I waited. I scooped up a handful of sand and threw it on her face. She still didn't close her eyes. Thud. The lead pipe slipped, the lead pipe slipped out of my hand and hit the ground. When I tried to pick it up, I realized how heavy it was, and I was surprised that I was wielding it as though it was a knife. I was sweating all over. The cold wind felt good on my skin. The cries of the Higurashi were calming me down and healing my soul. Rina was just like a broken dummy now. She had become a piece of junk. I am the owner of this land of junk, and I've defended it from her intrusion. Now she was a resident of this junkyard. I didn't feel bad about killing her. In fact, I felt rather fulfilled that I defeated the evil woman who had deceived my father. I started breathing slowly and calmly, and I regained enough energy to analyze the situation. I'd have to hide her body. First I had to get rid of her scooter. I climbed up the slope and kicked her scooter down the hill. It rolled down the slope, making a lot of noise and blended in with all the junk as it stopped, like it was there from the beginning. I went back down the slope and started dragging her body to my hideout. It should have taken as much effort as dragging a 50 kilogram sandbag, but it felt lighter than that. 
It was just a sandbag, yet it brought disaster to my family. I didn't lure her here in order to kill her. Or did I? Maybe I just didn't notice that I had that intention deep down in my heart. But even so, I felt like this was the best and most expedient solution. There was no better solution than killing her. How wasteful to depend on someone to help me. To wait for the day to come when they will. I remembered the murder of Satoshi-kun's aunt that happened last year. I had no doubt that Satoshi-kun murdered her. But I've never been as convinced as I am right at this moment. How could he have saved Satoko-chan Satoko other than by killing his aunt last year at that time in that circumstance? My situation was much the same as his. How could I have saved my father other than by killing her? If I was planning a murder, I would have been under a lot of pressure and stress. But, for better or for worse, the moment came to me out of nowhere. That's why... I believe I solved my problem with as little trouble as possible. Now that she's gone, will anyone become suspicious about her disappearance? She was an irresponsible person who skipped work at her own convenience. So I didn't think anyone would get suspicious when she'd disappear one day. She was a big mess from the start. People will think she went into hiding because she got into deep trouble with someone. I didn't need to fabricate an alibi. All I needed to do was get rid of her body. It took me a long- it took me a while to figure out how to do that last part. Hiding her body would be very risky, but my brain had become so calm that it did some calculations and came up with an answer right away. Yes. This place is still the safest. This is a place forgotten. Nobody comes here. Nobody knows this place is here. I knew that because I'd been spending a lot of time here. Compared to taking the risk of carrying her body to some other place, it was a lot safer to just hide it here. But it wasn't perfect yet. This place wouldn't remain a secret forever. I could hide it here for now, but I have to come up with the perfect way to make it completely disappear. It's a lot easier to think about that than thinking about how to make Rena break up with my father. I stuffed her corpse into a broken refrigerator in a trash pile. I wanted to cover the refrigerator with dirt and bury it, but that was too easy. I had to chop the corpse into pieces and make them completely disappear. I felt like it got dark all of a sudden. No, it didn't get dark all of a sudden. I just didn't realize it was getting dark until just then. I could hear thunder from a distance. It might rain soon. I could use some rain. It'd wash Rena's dirty blood into the ground. I should go home. I should think about what I'd do tomorrow. I was going to stay right beside my father until he forgets about her. He might be hurt at first, but we're going to recapture our happiness for sure. Our happy, peaceful life. You know, honestly, I know this chapter is supposed to be the answer arc for Oni Kakushi, but there's a lot more parallels to Tatari Garoshi in it. Overall. <laughs> like, seriously, this whole thing with Rena and Rena is basically the same thing that happened with Keiichi and Tepe. And even then, both of them comparing their own acts to exactly what Satoshi did. It's just strange. Like, I haven't seen the Oni Kakushi parallels yet other than it involves Rena rather than, like, Keiichi and Satoko. So, <laughs> yeah. Very weird. But, oh well, I'm sure it'll be more Oni Kakushi later on, you know? When it turns more into other shit, so, yeah. My body was heavy with exhaustion, but I also felt fulfilled because I took a very important first step today. I'll keep taking one step after another. I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm not going to cry until I win back my happiness. I'm not going to cry again. Hmm. Well, rest in peace, Rena. As far as I know, you don't show up in future arcs, so... <laughs> Enjoy being dead in a fridge. Alright. Well, I guess I'm going to end this episode here then, guys. We're a little under an hour, but... Oh, well. <laughs> this was a very good episode. This chapter overall is really fucking strong so far. Do I think it's better than Mayakashi so far? I don't know. But... It... It's... It's still really good, so... 
Yeah, something else that I feel about, like, Mayakashi in this chapter so far is that they're paced a lot faster. Like, shit happens and escalates so much sooner in them. Whereas Oni Kakushi took, what, six, seven hours to start, quote-unquote, getting real. I think Watanagashi technically took longer. And Tatari Garoshi... Tatari Garoshi wasn't as long, I feel. It was, like, five hours, maybe? Maybe even less than that, like... Yeah, it might have been like three or four, because Satoko, the whole shit was Satoko at first, before any like murders or crazy people doing crazy things happened. Yeah, it was like four hours then, three or four. Huh. But Mayakashi, I mean, they, they had that whole uh, part at the beginning with uh, Satoshi, anyways. So that started getting real at like three and four hours again. But Sumi Horiboshi has had, like, relatively real themes the whole fucking time. Well, no, Mayakashi did too, I guess, but... Mayakashi was borderline fluffy for the first two episodes? Whereas Sumi Horiboshi, it was just, like, one and a half. So, yeah. <laughs> Either way, though, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.